So let me come to the policy response, uh, both uh, monetary and fiscal. Uh, so I was surprised to see that despite uh, a forecast of 4.9% growth for a full year, uh, you're only expecting 50 basis points in cuts. Is there, uh, is there reason for monetary policy to be more aggressive at this stage? I mean, I think we need to, of course, put this in perspective of the, you know, 135 that has already been delivered in terms of uh, rate cuts, uh, because an incremental 50 will take us down uh, close to 4.65. And uh, one of the challenges, particularly in the near term, that the RBI will face is higher food inflation, which is going to push up uh, headline inflation above uh, 4%. Uh, so from a real rate uh, uh, perspective, uh, there would be a certain floor uh, that the MPC would uh, probably have in uh, mind. Uh, but I think, you know, the issue, again, is not just, you know, where the repo rate is. Let's say repo rates do come down to 4.65%, uh, which, you know, given a 35 to 4% uh, inflation uh, is actually okay. Um, where are bank lending rates uh, for the same set of macro parameters? And the real lending rates are still high. And whatever are the reasons, whether it's, you know, banks trying to protect their net interest margin or, you know, small savings or there may be various other reasons for why uh, bank real lending rates are high. But I think it's really the second leg of transmission from the banking sector that needs to happen, uh, which is where uh, the focus uh, needs to be. And transmission uh, focus also has to be transmission in terms of overall, you know, credit risk uh, environment. You know, how do we do? What do we do to uh, improve and bring down the risk premium that's sort of uh, building up? Uh, and I think the policy responses also, like I said need to uh, you know build in the right kind of macro conditions to attract more foreign capital uh, so a lot of the you know policy responses do not necessarily have to just be around monetary or fiscal policy i think the broader set of uh, macro policy toolkit has to be put in uh, place now to address the issue uh, it cannot be just uh, repo rate alone no, that point is taken, but I was just curious to know how you think they will deal with, and they will have to deal with it perhaps in December, when your headline inflation is going above four, uh, your economy is so weak. I know they have headroom, but I also know that the governor in one of his first policy statements very clearly said that, look, we have a mandate to target headline inflation. Uh, he's going to have to roll back a little on his words if he wants to focus on the weak economy and the weak core inflation. Well, it's clearly a dilemma that uh, they will face uh, in terms of low growth, uh, higher headline, and uh, also, you know, risks of uh, fiscal uh, slip. Um, but I, I think, you know, um, we need to stop obsessing about point-to-point -point inflation uh, and focusing more on sort of the medium-term average inflation, because this you know, four, first of all, this four plus inflation is driven by food and particularly specific, you know, uh, vegetable prices, which we all know will reverse if not in one or two months, then definitely in three to four months. Uh, the underlying core inflation is still, uh, you know, moderating. Uh, and uh, on a sort of a 12 month uh, average, so if you look at the average headline CPI inflation in 2018, you know, 2019, the projections for 2020, they're all actually around three and a half percent, even though there are specific months where inflation is actually overshooting four uh, percent, which is exactly the situation we will be in December. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, given where the average inflation is, given it's driven by more, you know, idiosyncratic uh, food shocks, given that underlying inflation is low and uh, given uh, where the output gap is, I actually don't think there is uh, much of a dilemma. I think uh, that should still set the stage uh, for a, a rate cut.